Dear friends, welcome to this video presentation on education under the British India. So far we have discussed on education in the ancient India and education in the medieval India, especially the Islam education in the previous video lectures. Actually we are entering into the third phase namely education in modern India. Education in modern India has got two aspects namely education under the British India before 1947, education in the post independent India after 1947. Now let us discuss on education under the British India. This section has got certain important milestones in Indian education. Charter Act, Woods Dispatch, Hunter Commission, Indian University Commission, Calcutta University Commission, Sergeant Report and finally Merits and Demerits of British Education. These are all very important milestones in Indian education. Let us enter into the deep discussion on these various educational commissions in British India. First Charter of Act of 1813, the East West Controversy, the Macaulay's Minutes, Filtration Theory, all important concepts in this particular Charter Act of 1813. The Charter Act of the East India Company was renewed after every 20 years in the British Parliament. Through this Act, education in India became the responsibility of East India Company. A sum of rupee 1 lakh each year shall be allotted and spent for the improvement of literature and science knowledge in the pattern of British education. There was no indication about the nature and medium of education in this charter. The company officials were interpreting the terms literature and learned natives differently. The term literature for some scholars meant Indian literature, Sanskrit, Hindi, Arabic, Persian literature and some other scholars meant it Western literature namely Latin and English literature. Because of the confusion of the terms two ideologies emerged namely Anglicist and Orientalist or Eastern scholars and Western scholars. Anglicist group this group said that the term literature meant western literature and learned natives meant experts in western literature. They wanted that English should be the medium of education for the Indians. The knowledge of western language and literature should be given to the Indians. Some officials wanted to make the education of Christianity compulsory. What is the what is the view of Orientalist group or Eastern group? According to this group, the term literature meant Indian literature and the term learned natives meant the scholars of Indian literature. They said that the medium of education in India should be the Indian languages. The education of Indian literature, knowledge and science should be important in India. They argued that India has its own culture and so it is necessary to provide education in its own languages and literature. What was the Britain's point of view with regard to this controversy? Anglicist argued that Indians would develop themselves because of the modern knowledge and science. They said that English education will develop western culture in India. Through English education, Indians may be prepared to help in the trade and administrative work of the company. Through English education, Indians would be loyal to Britain. They will be Indian by birth but English in taste and intellect. The British rule in India will be strengthened. What was the impact of Charter Act in India? The Charter Act 1813 gave momentum to the educational activities of the Christian missionaries as well as to the non-missionary organizations. Because of this act, schools and colleges in English system of education were established in India. What are the salient features of Macaulay's minutes? Lord Macaulay came to India as the law member of the Governor General's Council. 
He was a great scholar of the English language and literature. Lord William Pending, Governor General, asked Macaulay to give him advice on three points. How to spend the allotted amount of rupee 1 lakh on India on education every day? How to define the terms literature and learned natives? How to solve the Anglicist Orientalist controversy? Macaulay solved this language problem by presenting a forceful minute in 1835. This report was known as Macaulay's Minutes. The explanation of the section 43 of the Charter Act of 1813. The expenditure of money. Macaulay clearly said that the company would spend this money according to its objectives. The explanation of the term literature. Macaulay clarified that the term literature meant both Indian literature, Sanskrit, Arabic, Persian, and Western literature, English literature. The explanation of the term learned natives. Macaulay said that learned natives meant the scholars of Indian languages, Sanskrit and Arabic, and also the Indian scholars of English language also. Macaulay's suggestions. Having defined the section 43 of the Charter Act 1813, Lord Macaulay gave his suggestions about the nature of the education of Indians. Education of Eastern language and literature is worthless, he said. Macaulay wrote that Indian scriptures are full of superstitions and nonsense facts. Therefore, its teaching and learning is meaningless. Then, education of Western literature and knowledge is important, he said. According to Macaulay, English literature is the best literature of the world. For him, Sanskrit and Arabic literature were good for nothing. In his report, he stated, a single shelf of a good European library is worth the whole native literature of India and Arabia. Making English as the medium of education is necessary, he said. Reasons according to Macaulay's minutes. English is the key to modern knowledge. It stands eminent among the languages of the West. English is the language of the ruling class in India. English would bring about renaissance, transformation in India. The Indians have the desire to learn English also. Then there is a famous concept called filtration theory proposed by Macaulay. Macaulay suggested that the government should organize higher education only for the higher class of people. The elite class of people would trickle down their knowledge to the downtrodden people. This is called the filtration theory. Lord Macaulay submitted his report to the Governor General, Lord Penting, on February 2, 1835, and it was approved. Long term impact of Macaulay's minutes on modern Indian system of education. There has been a lot of adverse criticism against Macaulay and Macaulay's minutes. But even today, the spirit of Macaulay pervades through Indian education. Consider for example, Macaulay's clarification about the medium of instruction. Even one and of, uh, one and of century after Macaulay's minute, the medium of instruction in higher education and in large number of nursery, primary and secondary schools is English. English medium schools are in great demand even in remote villages. In British India, Indian society was interested with many social evils. Macaulay's Western education system made Indians aware about these social evils. They made efforts to eliminate them and brought about many reforms in it. Western literature and science dominate over Oriental literature in the curriculum of modern system of education. Next, let us discuss on Wood's Dispatch, 1854. Each education commission has its own noteworthy fact or accomplishment in Indian education. In 1853, after the company's charter came up for renew and mod modification after 20 years, Charles Wood, the president of the company's board of control, published a new 
declaration 1854 called woods dispatch after the deliberation review committee of charter act declared that the spread of education in india was not detrimental to the company's interest accepting the responsibility of educating the indians woods dispatch puts forth the following recommendations an office of the director of public instruction should be set up in each state emphasis should be laid upon the spread of public education and opening of more schools emphasis to be given for western education a system of granting aid financial aid should be adopted special institutions for training of teachers should be set up this is a very noteworthy point in indian education oriental education should be encouraged universities should be set up at calcutta madras and bombay professional education in law medicine and engineering should be given under the direct control of the universities the government accepted these recommendations and made it an educational policy and gave it a legal authority that is why woods dispatch is known as the magna carta of indian education next let us discuss on hunter commission education under the british administration for the first time during hunter commission recommendations education became the responsibility of british government directly under british parliament when the lord ripon became the viceroy he appointed the first indian education commission with the sir william hunter as its chairman Indians and missionaries were also given representation in the commission the main recommendations of hunter commission are the following government should withdraw from the management of secondary schools and take up the responsibility of primary education so the british government gave importance first to the primary education in india indigenous schools should be developed and brought into the mainstream of education normal schools for training of teachers to be opened women's education should be given emphasis next let us discuss on indian education commission 1902 each commission has its own special characteristic and this commission completely devoted for the promotion of college education in india in 1902 the then viceroy lord curzon set up the indian university commission headed by rally one of the members of its executive council its main recommendations are senate and syndicate in the university should be reorganized representation should be given for teachers in the senate curriculum and examination system should be modified meritorious students should be given scholarships intermediate course should be stopped BA degree course should be of 3 years duration hostel should be constructed for students now let us discuss on calcutta university commission in 1917 the government of india appointed the calcutta university commission under the chairmanship of dr michael sadler the vice chancellor of leeds university england Though the commission was asked to inquire into the conditions and future possibilities of the University of Calcutta, they studied the circumstances of all other Indian universities. That is the praiseworthy point with regard to Calcutta University Commission. It did a lot of good for Indian education, Indian university education system. Intermediate classes should be separated from the university. A three-year degree course should be instituted. Importance should be given to medicine, engineering, agriculture, commerce, education, science, and arts. Proper provision of finance should be made for efficient running of secondary education. Vernacular should be the medium of instruction in all the high schools, except for teaching of English and mathematics. Parka schools for Muslim. education should be started co education should be encouraged women teachers should be trained 
Next, let us discuss on Hartog Committee 1927. In 1929, the committee under the chairmanship of Sir Philip Hartog was set up. The suggestions given by Hartog Committee may be divided into three categories, namely suggestions regarding the primary education, suggestions regarding secondary education, and suggestions regarding higher education. At the end of the middle school, examinations should be conducted to find out the achievement and quality of the students. Those who are fit for higher education might be admitted to secondary school and others might be allowed to enter life for various occupations. The recommendations of Heart of Committee are valid even today. The concept that higher education is not for all but only for those who have aptitude for it is the idea behind, behind entrance examination for admission to universities. This idea is accepted and practiced by governments even today. The committee also made specific recommendations for female education, vocational education, education for SC and ST students that is a scheduled caste, scheduled tribe students and education for Muslim students. The committee felt that girls and boys had equal rights. Primary schools should be set up in rural areas. Lady teachers and inspectors should be appointed to encourage female education. It recommended the establishment of technological and occupational institutions. With regard to SC students, uh, scheduled caste, Dalit students, the committee recommended that Dalit students or most disadvantaged students, they are called the SC students, should be educated along with others. The report of the Hot Talk Committee was a milestone in the history of Indian education. It had touched almost all the aspects of Indian education. Let us now discuss on Abbott Wood Report 1937. The Indian government invited Mr. Abbott and Mr. Wood from England and a committee was formed to make recommendations about technical and vocational education in India. This is also the first in India uh, which spoke about technical and vocational education. All these things have the seeds for modern Indian education after independence, no doubt about it. It was because of the recommendations of this committee that polytechnic institutions emerged in the country. At the same time, general curricula pertaining to professional studies, commercial subjects and agriculture were initiated into high schools. Finally, let us discuss on the Sargent Report 1944. The British government appointed a committee under the chairmanship of Sir John Sargent to draw up a plan for the development of Indian education. This report meant for the educational development in the post-war period. It is known as the Sargent Plan. What are the recommendations? The report recommended that Children between the ages of 6 and 14 should be given free primary, primary education. It suggested that after 11 years of age at the middle level, there should be different kinds of syllabi, should be cultural. At the same time, they should help the students both in entering a university and also securing a suitable profession and livelihood. In its opinion, there should be two kinds of high schools, academic and technical. Both academic and technical streams should aim at developing and imparting integral education. What is the relevance of Sargent Report to modern Indian education? The recommendation of Sargent Report on pre-primary education as a means to develop social behavior in children is valid even in today. Even today, according to NPA 1986, pre-primary education is a crucial input in human resource development. The spirit of constitutional guarantee about free and compulsory education for all below the age of 14 and Right to Education Act 2009 are foreshadowed in this recommendation. When Sarton Commission recommends that the curriculum for secondary education should contain mother tongue, 
English and the modern Indian language. We are reminded of the three language formula introduced in the curriculum of secondary education of modern India. The recommendations relating to higher education is ultra modern. The NPE 1986 has not gone an inch further than these recommendations which were made more than 60 years ago. The introduction of three degree course, delinking of pre-degree from colleges, establishment of UGC which brought about great changes in the academic performance of colleges etc are recommended in the report and they are relevant even today. Recommendations on technical education, adult education, teachers training, education of the handicapped etc have a modern touch. A careful objective study of Sargent report will convince anybody that its recommendations have relevance and applications for Indian system of education now and for many years to come, no doubt. What are the merits of British education in India? British education brought Indians into touch with Western knowledge and science. It evolved new methods for the spread of education. It led India into scientific development. British education in India led to the development of Indian arts. It inspired the development of literacy and cultural consciousness. It created social and political awareness. British education developed nationalistic feelings. British education helped for the establishment of political and social institutions. Thank you very much dear friends for your presence. God bless you. Let us listen into one more video lecture which would be the last in our educational course. Thank you very much. God bless you.